you look at Bangkok and this incredible city that's filled with high rise and beautiful restaurants and temples and tourist attractions and you see that part of the city, you see that beautiful part of Thailand and you don't see this slum. You have to go there to see it. But he made us see it. Father Joe made us really, really look. The slaughterhouse has been here for almost a hundred years. And in the old days, the Chinese needed a place to, to butcher the pigs. So they chose Klong Tui because uh, Klong Tui was on the outskirts of the city and close to water. And today they still kill pigs here. And this area is still known as the slaughterhouse. Father Joe and I share similar journeys. Father Joe's journey started over 50 years ago and he has continued to work with the people of Klong Toi and he has put in that time over 80,000 children through school. He has rescued and helped and supported abandoned, sexually abused and trafficked children and his contribution to that world has been immense. When I first came to Bangkok, I, I felt, you know, this cowboy syndrome. You know, the cowboy walking into Dodge. I mean, this is really cool, you know. Living in the slaughterhouse, that's that's in the slums, in the worst slums of Klong Thai of Bangkok. But to be a cowboy in Klong Thai is it's different than the movies. To, to be a, a cowboy in the slaughterhouse, you better learn to... Uh, to say you're sorry. You better learn to bow your head. And you better learn to not to show off and think you're big and tough, because you're not. And one of the things he said to me was, when you're filming, keep your head down, don't stare, and tell the effing truth. You know, killing pigs, it's, it happens overnight. And killing people, it takes years. And they kill them slowly by poverty. And, exploiting them and using them and using our women and using our kids and it just kills you it just tears your guts out father joe was telling this incredible story this harrowing story about um some people in the slums in klong Toy, and the whole room was silent i mean you could have heard a pin drop there was this little girl she's about five years of age and they wanted to use her for sex they'd use her mouth put it that way they would use her mouth she was smart enough not to bite because two of her friends whom she knew had been used, sold to do this same thing, this mouth business. And so they, they knocked their teeth out. It's very simple. This is what a priest is supposed to do. You're supposed to care for the poor and live with them and do the best you can. This is life. This is reality. This is the way it is. There's nobody else around that I've seen on the horizon. And it needs to be done. And uh, I've kind of stumbled into this. And I, I really believe it's the grace of God. He's like a guardian angel with teeth. He's like one of these Old Testament priests who, yes, forgives, but he doesn't forget. He, he fights for his people for his family. Seven, eight, nine-year-old girls are pushed by their moms to sell flower garlands and for a few hundred baht to get into a customer's car and into a spider web from which they never escape. For these pedophile predators, they always go free because uh, money and threats talk very loudly in these parts. May we walk in the shadow of the rainbow. That's, that's quite nice. And we'll meet, we'll meet on the horizon. We'll walk into the sunset. And uh, as Yoda said in one of the Star Wars movies, it's twilight now. I must rest. <laughs>